I've always wondered what kind of returns people make by acting on stock tips. I have never paid much attention to these tips, but in March of 2022, I began wondering how valuable they really are. Everyone claims to make phenomenal returns through such ideas, so I figured why not track the tips I get to see if I'm missing out. So here's what I did. I decided to track all stock tips I chanced upon over a six-month period, starting from April 1st, 2022 until the 30th of September, 2022. The sources of these was often social events where the conversation inevitably veers towards stocks and investing. But they came in many other ways as well. I figured the ideal solution was to simulate buying recommended stocks to see what would happen if I did invest based on tips. So I set about designing the experiment. The fundamental idea was that I would not apply my mind or discriminate in any way. The only criterion was that the market capitalization of the concerned stock be over 100 crores to ensure that if I ever did buy a stock based on a tip, liquidity would not be a concern. The next question was the holding period. I figured I would track each stock for a period of one year from the hypothetical date of purchase, thereby giving sufficient time for the story to play out as well as offering the advantage of long-term taxation on the hypothetical sale. So, to sum up, I would simulate an equal weighted allocation to each unique stock tip that came my way over a six-month period and hold each position for a period of a year after initial purchase to find out just how valuable stock tips really are and whether my skepticism of them is justified or misplaced. Go ahead and like, subscribe and hit the bell icon if you haven't done so. And as always, nothing in this video or on this channel is a recommendation to or not to buy, sell or hold any security. Please do your own due diligence and consult a financial advisor before dealing in any security. I would love to hear about your own experiences with tips in the comments as well. Also, I ask that at this point, you guess the final outcome of this experiment before seeing the actual results. I got my first tip on the 7th of April this would turn out to be the first of 34 unique tips I got over my six-month buy window. For the curious among you, it was to buy a large private bank. My final unique stock tip arrived on the 19th of September. Incidentally, no tip breached my 100 crore market cap requirement. Also, in total I received 47 tips, which number was whittled down to 34 due to the uniqueness requirement. So how did these stocks perform? In aggregate, they perform better than I expected they would. The more interesting data though, is the enormous diversity of performance. The single best performing stock rose over 300%, but the worst fell over 75%. All in all, 18 of the 34 tips gave positive returns, so little better than flipping a coin. However, when you consider that most investors are happy with a 60% strike rate, this is not something to scoff at. Coming back to the wide spectrum of performance, among the detractors, the average decline was an astonishing 25.6%. What is clear, at least with the benefit of hindsight, is in most of these cases, the success of the tips was ultimately dependent on the unlikely continuation of temporary conditions. Then again, everyone's a genius with the benefit of hindsight. Put another way, these tips were signs of topping out on most of these counters. And as you may have guessed, they were predominantly companies and sectors that people seem to have forgotten also have to endure cycles. However, as I said earlier, this was not a test of my skills, but a test of a basket of tips, and therefore I did not discriminate and ignore any tip. The winners have many subplots as well. Five of the 18 gave returns of less than 10% over the year-long holding period. The average gain, though, was an incredible 45.5%. But here's where it gets really interesting. What if I remove just one stock from these 18, the best performer that I mentioned earlier? The average gain slides to 30%. And if I remove the top two, it falls further to 23%. This is a crucial point to note. Remember, the average loser in this group declined by over 25%. What happens when we begin removing outliers at the losing end? Without the worst performer, the average decline among losing stocks falls to about 22%. Remove the second worst as well, and the average declines a further 2 percentage points. 
clearly the outliers on the negative side have less of an outsized effect as those on the positive side. Of course, this is simply a function of how arithmetic works. After all, a loser can at most fall 100%, while the potential gain from a winner is infinite. So in the end, how did this basket of 34 stocks do? The pre-tax gain for my basket was 12% and the post-tax gain was 10.8%. For some context, I should add that over this 18-month period, the nifty rolling return was about 10.3%. So the good news is the basket, despite the detractors, fulfilled the most basic requirement of any investment, which is to outperform the benchmark index. Imagine that I invested 100 rupees in each of the 34 stocks, cumulatively a 3400 rupee investment. The pre-tax end value of this basket was approximately 3810 rupees, resulting in a 410 rupees gain. However, the top two gainers earned 445 rupees between them. That means that just two stocks accounted for 109% of the gain. And that's the real story here. In the end, without discrimination, a collection of stock tips ultimately performed as an average fund would. Think of a fund manager building a fund. He would probably have between 30 and 40 stocks. And the distribution of success of those holdings in any given year would probably be a less extreme version of my basket of tips. But in aggregate, like most funds, it would do slightly better or worse than the index. Remember, beating the index over a sustained period of time is an incredibly challenging task, even for the most battle-hardened experts. I had inadvertently created a flexi-cap fund comprising many stocks, representing a cross-section of the economy, and therefore was likely condemned to broadly perform in line with the index. Now, you may argue that there are obvious flaws in my system. For example, no one would wait for a stock to fall 75%. They would simply stop out much earlier than that. So let's imagine that I added the following rule to my experiment. I would exit a stock if it fell 10% from my purchase price. That is, I include a 10% stop loss requirement. This would significantly boost performance, right? Any guesses for what my overall return would have been had I done this? an unfortunate 9.2% pre-tax. Here's why. In 12 of the 16 detractors, I would have cut my losses and saved a lot of money. This alone would have reduced my absolute losses from detractors by about 254 rupees in my example of 100 rupees invested in every stock. However, in the remaining four, it would have cost me about five rupees as I would have exited before there was some recovery in these. Therefore, the average decline among detractors would be capped at a negative 10% versus the far worse negative 25.6% I would have endured without a stop loss rule. It is clear that stop losses would have saved me a great deal of money among the detractors, as instead of losing 409 rupees of the 1600 invested in the detractors, I would only have lost 160. That's the good news. But here's the trade-off. In 7 of the 18 winners, I would have stopped out and never enjoyed the wins. Amazingly, in 3 of the top 5 winners, I would have stopped out. The total rupee gains on my 1800 invested in the winners was about 819 rupees without the stop loss rule. With it, that number would be 472 rupees of gain. As not only would I have sacrificed eventual gains, but I also would have booked 10% losses in some of the eventual winners. Therefore, my gains from the winners would fall from an average of 45% to 26%. Ultimately, because I am blindly following tips for the purpose of this simulation, instead of enjoying minor outperformance against the index, I would have suffered underperformance, as well as the far more painful emotional turmoil of watching stocks I sold multiply in price. Please don't take this as a sign that stop losses should be avoided though. They are extremely important tools while trading. I am merely pointing out the consequences of mindless investing and that most things, even good things, involve a trade-off. So what did I learn from this experiment? A key takeaway is tips have the potential to become a useful pipeline of ideas. But ultimately, every investor that is directly investing his money has to rely on his own mind. 
I don't for a second blame the people who gave me the tips. There is not a single case where the person had any desire for a negative outcome. And I'm sure in all the cases, the tipper himself owned the stock or stocks recommended. Also, the winners were really big winners. They outperformed the index by 35 percentage points. That's Buffett partnership level outperformance. The problem, of course, was the poor performance of the detractors. Discriminating based on the source of the tip may not have worked either. For instance, the person who gave me the second best performing tip was also the source for the worst performing tip. In all the cases, the source was a person I respect and whose opinion I continue to value. Yet, despite all these things going for it, the basket of tips basically matched the index. Think of another aspect of the tip problem as well. If you are at most times invested in the market, how much dry powder do you have for these tips? Also, how much are you actually willing to risk based on something you heard at a party? My guess is at most you would allocate 10% of your portfolio to such ideas. So if you get 50 tips, that's a 20 basis point allocation per tip. What's the point? And 50 may seem high to some of you, but there are people who get 50 tips a month. And instead of focusing on things you really believe in, your time, energy and money is getting diverted to things that will inevitably have relatively minor effects on your overall returns. And that dry powder is getting wasted on tiny allocations instead of being used to add to core holdings that you have invested in after understanding what's actually happening in the underlying businesses. Maybe your tips are better than mine. And maybe if I tracked tips over a different 18 month period, I would have had a dramatically different experience. But my takeaway is to stick to using my own brain. Like I said earlier, using tips as a funnel for ideas may make sense. But ultimately, the person you should rely on is the person you see in the mirror. I hope you found this video useful. Thanks for watching. Sensei Kujaku. Sensei Kujaku.